Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here with your hurricane outlook and discussion. Welcome to Friday, June 26, 2020. Uh, a few things of interest to talk about in the tropics today. Nothing alarming, no worries in terms of any land impacts or anything like that, but more so that we might see some signs that lend additional credibility to this notion that we have a very busy season ahead of us. It's already been fairly busy so far with four named storms. I think we're going to add to that uh, in fairly short order. First of all, a wide shot of the Atlantic Basin. Great satellite animation from tropicaltidbits.com. And generally speaking, more convection over here on the western side of the basin than we have on the eastern side of the basin, with the exception of this area here, which we'll get to in a moment. Um, nothing really brewing, still strong upper level winds as you can see here. Uh, lots of westerly flow in the atmosphere, in the upper levels especially. The lower levels you have the trades coming across, in fact let's highlight that in purple. Trades coming across this way run into those stronger upper level winds and that's what creates that shear, uh, at least one way to do it. Uh, in the eastern Pacific still a lot of activity trying to get going but it's kind of having a hard time because there's so much going on that no one area seems to be able to kind of consolidate and make a name for itself. So, you know, literally and figuratively. And we can see that very well demonstrated here on the vorticity signature uh, of uh, a good deal of the Western Hemisphere. Look at all this. It's strung out over a fairly large area. You get a, a concentration there, another one there and another one there, but when you have all that energy spread out over such a large area, instead of one area trying to bundle it all together, it's just harder to get any one particular intense storm. Um, notice the lack of vorticity on the inside of this white area that I'm outlining. So all in this area here, yeah, that's that Saharan air. You can actually see its influence because it's kind of punched in here, created that outline there. That's so cool. Uh, pretty good sunsets coming up. I've already seen a few pictures of that on social media. You know, the dust from Africa, yes, it was very unusual, highly anomalous, you know, uh, departure from the norm, as they say. But unless you're a, a severe asthmatic, and, and that certainly isn't to be diminished, I'm just saying, you know, otherwise it's, it's not part of 2020 and it's horrible and dangerous or whatever. In fact, like I've said, I think it's a sign that the African easterly jet that tries to come out here uh, off the coast of Africa and over the continent there really means business this year. Elsewhere in the tropics, notice what we have out here. And what I want to do now is kind of zoom in on this. Uh, this area really important as we watch the next couple of days, not because it's going to be a problem for anybody, but look at this little blob of, of uh, not convection, I mean it is, but the vorticity, maybe the sun's getting to me, <laughs> this vorticity right here trying to, you know, close off, become its own uh, thing, so to speak, compared to what we have over in the eastern Pacific where it's all strung out. So this area here, fairly low in latitude, I mean, that's 10 degrees north right there, so this is getting down uh, closer to 6 degrees north latitude. And uh, it's way out just south, uh, south southwest of the Cape Verde Islands. And that has become the subject of a lot of talk as of late, and I'll show you why in just a moment. In the meantime, if you're headed to the beach, especially in Florida, wow! Um, look at that. I mean, that's 29 to 30 Celsius all through here, right up against the, the shelf water area. 30 and 31 Celsius. Oh my goodness. I mean, that is toasty. Very, very warm water. We're talking water temperatures in the upper 80s to near 90 in some areas. 31 Celsius in here just to the south of Cuba. Uh, near the Isle of Youth here, I believe that's called, and my goodness, I mean, just very warm overall. And if we look at the anomalies for today, it's up, actually it's updated yesterday. This is always a day behind, but that's fine. That part of the Gulf right there near Florida, definitely running above the long-term average. 
as of course it is throughout the main development region the northeast subtropical Atlantic up here that horseshoe shape we talked about that before nothing has changed we don't really have a La Nina this is more cold neutral so the overwhelming signal still seems to be upward motion focused in the Atlantic it'll, it'll come it'll stay with sinking motion favored here over the Pacific all the way out to the central and western Pacific so this area should be the busiest balancing things out once the hurricane season really starts to get going in a little over and eh, a little bit more than a month from now hopefully it'll wait that long notice too the amazing anomalies all of a sudden up here in the northwest Atlantic that will help to build heights up over the North Atlantic so that when you have hurricanes that come across they're not going to be as likely to escape out with a trough like that not saying they won't many will but some are going to be able to get through and who knows we'll just put a question mark in here it's a sorry question mark but you get the idea when I see that really really warm water up over the North Atlantic like that the Northwest Atlantic that tells me that the uh, heights will build over the, uh, the the late summer into early fall another signal of a potentially active season and a big landfall season perhaps as well all right so the Saharan air layer the first bout of it uh, has all but dissipated in terms of the dry air part you still have the dust that is suspended in the air and and that'll show up uh, in and around our skies over the southeast the deep south even in some areas of the way it works the upper air currents will carry it up into parts of southern Canada um, but out over the ocean here over the Atlantic still very very robust Saharan air all of this is just a big shutdown for development that being said look at what we have here two areas of convection slipping in literally under the radar and avoiding that Saharan air layer uh, and this is where things get interesting again I'm gonna make it very clear right now I don't see any threats developing that would impact land not for Barbados not for Trinidad Tobago Grenada anywhere the windwards or the leewards no so don't worry okay we're not coming at you with oh there's a hurricane coming because you're gonna possibly hear about more development I'm looking at my phone uh, so some more development coming up and the important takeaway is where and when I think the when part is actually more important than the where but they are closely connected and let me explain here so we see the uh, Saharan air here and you say oh yep all that dust a lot of people talk about that it's a Saharan air festival nothing's gonna develop hurricane seasons overblown blah 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 well you gotta look deeper and we have the tools to do that all of this blue and the lighter green etc all through here yes that's the dry very low precipitable moisture uh, the precipitable water in the atmosphere those are very low values but look south of there they're exceptionally high values including over parts of interior Africa as well uh, the southern part and you know up here along the Sahara um, yes of course it's dry as you'd expect it to be if it's not we are in a world of hurt as a uh, as a as a species we're done if the Sahara starts to get moist and bloom we're gonna have problems um, so this is what you'd expect to see so what's so important look right here you can just barely make out if you look closely it is hard because these are this is June we're talking about this is not August but there is a little bit of spin down there vorticity we just talked about that right here that right there is this area right here on the precipitable water animation here from the University of Wisconsin that is the same area very high amounts of precipitable water and this is what computer models are trying to pick up on and we can see that reflected in some tweets here from some knowledgeable people it's not just me 
that is seeing this. I'm not the only one. Tyler Stanfield, who is that, you might ask? Smart individual, grad student. Uh, he's at Virginia Tech now. Uh, has his Bachelor of Science from meteorology in meteorology from OU. Congratulations, Tyler. Specialized in tropical meteorology and climate teleconnections. This guy, well on his way to being another one of those amazing geniuses. So he's picking this out too. ECMWF, GFS, recently become more aggressive in the development of a compact and brief tropical cyclone from a strong tropical wave located in the eastern Atlantic. Important to note, while not a notable threat to land, it's still climatologically abnormal to have storms form here in late June. So if this were to develop this far east, I mean, we're looking, let's even click on this, I should be able to. Nope, it's not going to let me. That's fine. We can see it fine uh, over here. If this were to develop, it's weird. You can get some images and movies to go full screen, some you can't. Whatever. Uh, if this develops, I mean, that's the Cape Verde Islands, Cabo Verde Islands, whichever you prefer. Wow. I mean, come on. At the end of June, that would be very, very early to get something to develop that far east. Andy Hazelton works down at, uh, as an assistant scientist at the University of Miami, and he works with NOAA's HRD, the Hurricane Research Division, and he's talking about the same kind of thing, the ECMWF, the Euro, shows a, a brief spin-up of a possible tropical cyclone in the main development region as the convectively coupled Kelvin wave, that shot of Red Bull as we call it, passes overhead. There are no June tropical cyclones in the record within 200 miles of this location if it were to happen. This is what the Euro showed from the Zero Z last night. See? Valid 72 hours out, so uh, Sunday night. There it is. That, ladies and gentlemen, if it comes to pass and we get a depression or a named storm, would signal to me that the main development region out here is very fertile already. And when we get to the climatologically favored peak time of late August through September, I mean, what else do I have to say? It would be very concerning for people in the islands and points west, not just the United States. So that's what we take away from this. Another symptom of the overall pattern being very favorable, another signal that we can't ignore. So I'm going to be watching this very, very closely uh, this weekend. Again, if this develops, it'll be very short-lived. It'll get up here into that Saharan air. It'll ingest that dry air, and it will... Uh, it'll be very short-lived. And what um, Andy was talking about, too, uh, the area that it could possibly develop, nothing else has done so in that area before. These are the other storms of record. And they go back, you know, we're talking about much later time frames than this, right? Not, not anything in late uh, June. And TD4 in 2017, oh, that sounds like a familiar year, started in a very similar location, but... That was July 5th through the 7th. We would be a solid week or more ahead of that if it were to happen. So there you go. Something to ruminate on in your frontal lobe over the next few days. You know, if anything, I want it to motivate you. If you've been thinking, hurricane season, schmurricane season, who cares? They always say it's going to be busy. I'm telling you, we're trying to show you the facts, the science, the data, this is all real stuff. Um, hey, as far as I know, I mean, I look at these products and they've worked for me for 15 to 25 years, depending on which products we look at. So I trust them and they're just getting better and better. All right, so take that to heart. Real quick before I let you go, I've got five of these remaining. Yep. Hurricane tracking chart for 2020. Look how big that thing is. Yeah, it's huge. It's 18 by 24 inches. You use a Sharpie to track. I know we've already had four named storms, but you're probably going to add, I don't know, 12 to 15 more to that. It's not too late. I've got five of them left. I do sell these as a fundraiser. I only printed 100. I sent a bunch out to some of our patrons already. 
sold a handful. I've got five left if you want one. They are only $20. That includes the shipping. I fold them and I ship them to you. It's very economical. It only costs me a buck forty to ship them. And then the remainder of the funding helps with, you know, potential uh, gas money or something, which it's at least still fairly affordable, despite the fact that prices are rising for some strange reason. I thought we had all this extra gas sitting around, but that's not what we talk about here on this channel. It's mostly hurricanes. But anyway, if you want to get one of these maps, you better do it quick. They're awesome. And it could be a historic season, and you'd have a heck of a record of that when all is said and done. So check the description in today's video for a link, and you can pick one of these up, and um, I'll send it to you ASAP. All right, have a great rest of your weekend as it begins today, and uh, I'll be around Saturday and Sunday. I'll do updates, of course. We'll keep you posted on what's happening. Follow me on Twitter, on YouTube. Hurricane Track is the brand. We are supported by our awesome patrons on Patreon. If you get a chance, check that out and what all we offer there as part of your support for the long game. That's what we want to do is be able to continue to do this for years to come. And for that, we have our patrons to thank. I am Mark Suddeth. Thank you for tuning in. I'll be back with more for you throughout the weekend.